Hello and welcome, I'm Dr. K. In this video, we will examine the orthokinematics of the elbow joint. The articulations forming the elbow are the humeral ulnar and humeral radial joints. Let's discuss humeral ulnar articulation first. Humeral ulnar articulation is composed of a convex trochlea of the humerus and a concave trochlea notch of the ulna. The joint is typically classified as a modified hinge joint with one degree of freedom, flexion, and extension. It is referred to as a modified hinge joint because the ulna experiences a slight amount of axial rotation and side-to-side -side motion as it flexes and extends. Now, let's examine the humeral radial joint. The humeral radial joint is an articulation between the cup-like fovea of the radial head and the rounded capitulum of the humerus. The humeral radial joint is typically classified as a pivot joint, with the radial head pivoting around the humeral capitulum. We can observe the movement of these two joints from two distinct perspectives. First, as an open kinematic chain, where the distal segment is free to move on the proximal segment. Examples of real-life movements would be bending an elbow to lift a cup of tea or lifting a dumbbell. In these examples, the ulna and the radius move on top of the humerus, which is created by the concave on the convex movement. Second perspective is a closed kinematic chain movement. In this case, a distal segment would be fixed and the proximal segment would perform the movement. So, a real-life example would be a push-up or a pull-up, where the radius and ulna are fixed by the bar, and the only way to execute the movement is to move the humerus. In this example, the humerus moves on top of the ulna, or the humerus moves on top of the radius, which is created by a convex on a concave movement. Remember, when a concave object moves on a convex, the roll and the glide will occur in the same direction. But when a convex object moves on a concave, the roll and the glide will occur in the opposite directions. Let's start with the open kinematic chain movement and examine the humeral ulna orthokinematics. Flexion is the first osteokinematic movement we will look at. Since we observed a concave trochlea notch move around the convex trochlea, the roll and the glide will occur in the same direction. With flexion, observe the ulna roll and glide in the anterior direction. And now the opposite. Let's examine extension. With extension, observe the ulna roll and glide in the posterior direction. Now, let's examine humeral radial orthokinematics and start with flexion again. Since we observe a concave radial head move around a convex capitulum, the roll and the glide will occur in the same direction. With flexion, observe the radius, roll, and glide in the anterior direction. Now, the opposite movement, extension. With extension, observe the radius, roll, and glide in the posterior direction. Now, let's take a look at the closed kinematic chain movement. Let's examine humeral ulnar orthokinematics. Flexion is the first osteokinematic movement that we will look at. Since we observe a convex trochlea move on a concave trochlea notch, the roll and the glide will occur in the opposite directions. With flexion, observe the humerus roll anterior and glide posterior. Now, extension. With extension, 
observe the humerus, roll posterior. And glide, anterior. Now, let's examine humeroradial arthrokinematics. Since we observe a convex capitulum, move on a concave radial head. The roll and the glide will occur in the opposite directions. Let's examine flexion first. With flexion, observe the humerus roll anterior and glide posterior. Let's take a look at the arthrokinematics with extension. With extension, observe the humerus roll posterior and glide anterior. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe.